All right, this is fifth grade, module six, lesson seven. And in this lesson, students are going to be plotting points, they're going to be drawing lines, and then they're going to be looking at those points and the lines, and they're going to be talking about patterns and trying to come up with patterns and essentially coming up with the formula for that line. So let's get started. So we begin with, we're supposed to complete that chart and then plot the points on the coordinate plane. So what does that mean by complete the chart? Well, basically, it just means zoom in and take your x value and your y value, your x coordinate and your y coordinate, and make that the ordered pair, that coordinate pair. So this becomes 2, comma, 0. This becomes 3 and a half, comma, 1 and a half. And these are the points that we are going to plot on that graph to our right. Now, we're going to zoom out and make that large enough so that we can do that. And then, okay, so I'm just going to grab my little dots. And this says 2, 0. So x coordinate is 2, the y coordinate is 0. So our plot goes right there. And I wanted a thicker dot. Let's do a dot right there. And then we've got 3.5 on the x coordinate, 1.5 on the y coordinate. So 3.5 and 1.5 and and puts us right there. Then we've got 4.5, 2.5. So 4.5, 2.5 puts us right there. And lastly, 6, 4. And that puts us right about there. And so you could see we have our nice little handy dandy line. Everything's going nice and neat in a perfect line looking like that. That's awesome. Now, it says to use a straight edge. I didn't use a straight edge, but you get the idea. It says write a rule showing that relationship. So basically what we're going to do is we want to see how is the x coordinate and the y coordinate, how are they related? And so the idea is, and let's zoom in a little bit, and what we want to do is we want to see what is, the, what is the relationship between the x and the y. And you can either look at them over here in these two columns, or you can look at them in, as their ordered pairs. Oftentimes what I do is I start with whole numbers because for some reason I'm, e I'm able to visualize whole numbers a little bit easier at this point than fractions. And I see that, well, 2 and 0 and 6 and 4. I notice that there's always a separation of 2. 2 minus 2 is 0. 6 minus 2 is 4. So I'm going to use that as my hypothesis, and then I'm going to look at my fraction. 3 and a half minus 2. Hey, look at that. That works. It, that is 1 and a half. Similarly, 4 and a half. Take away 2. It's 2 and a half. Oh, look at that. My rule is take the x value, subtract by 2, and that gives me my y value. So that's my rule. So I'm going to zoom back out and my rule is to take the x value, subtract by 2, and that gives me my y value. Now if I wanted to, I could have written that as y is equal to x minus 2. Uh, t parents and teachers, that's kind of that classic algebra way of writing it. Uh, but it's, it's okay for us to write it like this. Take the x minus the 2, and then you get the y. Uh, we also could have said, well, start with the y and add by 2, and you get your x. That would have been fine as well. So let's name two other points that are on the line. Now the idea is we get to choose any value for x because we know we just have to subtract 2, and that gives us our y. All right, so, oh, let's make 10 our value of x. That means our value of y will be 8. And let's choose, oh, 3 as our value, our coordinate for x. We subtract 2, we get 1, and there are our two points. Now, parents and teachers, are these the only two points possible? No, in fact, I just randomly chose the number 10 and randomly chose the number 3. So let your students have fun choosing their own personal values, coordinate values for x. Now the cool thing is the other way we can we can kind of check ourselves. 3 comma 1. Hey, look at that. 3 comma 1 is right here and that's exactly where our line was going through anyway. 
3 comma 1 is right here. So that kind of works out, doesn't it? Um, and that's another way we could have checked ourselves. And we can say, hey, look at that. If we wanted to, we could have extended this graph, and we could have seen that 10 comma 8 would be perfectly on our line, and that would have worked. So this is the exact same concept, but I'm going to kind of speed things a little bit, and I'm going to just quickly fill in our chart. And by the amazing power of technology, there's our points. And they're filled in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start guessing and checking. I'm going to think about addition. Hmm. Well, zero to zero, there is no addition. It doesn't change. And, then I, and I'm going to start by looking at my whole numbers as well. And I think, well, this is adding by two. I start with one and I add by two. But that rule does not work here. In fact, the rule doesn't work here either. One-fourth plus two is not three-fourths. And one-half plus two is not one-and-a-half. So the rule probably doesn't involve addition. Maybe the rule involves multiplication. So again, I'm going to go back to just my whole numbers, and I'm going to start here, and I'm going to say, well, 1 times 3 is 3. Does that work here? And surprisingly enough, it does. 0 times 3 is 0. So multiplication of 3, multiplying by 3, seems to work on the whole numbers. Let's see if that multiplying by 3 works on our fractions. Well, 1 fourth times 3, hey, that equals 3 fourths. And if I think about 1 half, 1 half times 3. Well, if I have 3 halves, that equals 1 whole plus an extra half. So it turns out multiplying by 3 works every single time. So that is my rule. My rule is take the x value, multiply by 3, that gives me my y value. So I'm going to ignore the fact that I'm supposed to plot these, and I'm going to jump straight down to what's our rule, and our rule is take the x value, multiply by 3, and that gives us the y value. Now, parents and teachers, there's a variety of more official ways we could have written this, and it's perfectly fine if our students don't write it using that standard convention. But if we wanted to show our students standard convention, we might write it like this. We might write it like 3x is equal to y. These are other ways that are probably a little bit more official than this. Uh, but either way works just fine. And I'm going to ignore the rest of this problem. I thought I would just talk us through that coming up with a formula method. So here what we've got, parents and teachers, is we've got this big old graph, right? And uh, we're just going to answer a bunch of these questions. And so uh, kind of like we're working backwards compared to the previous slide. Now we've got the graph, and now we're talking about, instead of giving the points, come up with a graph. Now we have the graph, and we're going to be talking about the points. So it says for any point on line M, here's line M, what is the x-coordinate? Well, every single time... The x-coordinate is always 10. So x-coordinate equals 10, because you could see it right here. The x-value is always 10, and it's the y-value that changes. The x-value never changes. Give three points that are on line n. Okay, so now here's line n. What, what we can do is we can zoom in. And what we're going to do is we're going to look for where line N perfectly crosses on the hatch, hatch marks, the hatches, hatch, hatches, whatever, hatch marks on our graph. And you can see, I'm going to zoom in even further on line N, and I can see that right here, the line perfectly crosses the hash marks. So that right there is a point. 
In fact, I can look around and I could see another point there, another point there, because the line is perfectly crossing the hash marks. And so it says choose three. So I can choose any three. So I'm going to choose that one. Oh, let's do this one. And let's do this one. So I have chosen three points. I don't know why I chose those three in particular, but those are the three I chose. And we're going to zoom out. And it says give the coordinates for those three points. All right, well, here's this first point right there. And I can see that the X coordinate is 8 and the Y coordinate is 14. For this point, I can see that the X coordinate is 12 and the Y coordinate is 18. And for this last point here that I happen to choose, I can see the X coordinate is 16 and the Y coordinate is 22. And the question says is what write a rule that describes this relationship. So I'm going to look at these three points and I'm I'm going to compare the x-coordinate with the y-coordinate each time. And I notice, hmm, how do these guys compare every single time? And it looks like every single time I take the x-coordinate and I add 6 to it, and that gives me my y-coordinate. So there's my rule stating the relationship between the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate of the line n. So using that same graph, we're just going to continue with the rest of the questions. But now we're going to start by focusing on line q. And so with line q right here, I'm going to zoom in and take a look at line q because we're supposed to identify three points on line q. So as we look at line Q, we want to find where this line perfectly cro crosses the hatch marks on our graph. And as I look, see right here, that does not perfectly cross the hash mark. There's some sort of fraction involved there. So I'm going to keep looking, and oh, right there. There is a perfect point, right? Because it perfectly crosses that ha both the X and the Y uh, hash marks, right? And I'm going to keep going backwards, and I'm going to look, and I'm going to look. Oh, here's another one right there. So I'm going to highlight that point as well. And then we need to find a third one. And oh, I have one here. I have one here. I could choose any of them. So let me choose this one because it's, I don't know, I'm just being different. So there. So there are my three points that lie on Q. And then once we've found those three points, we're supposed to write a rule. Well, first we're supposed to give the coordinates for those three points. So the coordinates for those three points, you have an x value and a y value. So looking here, our first point, the x coordinate is 4 and the y coordinate is 2. So I'm, I'm kind of thinking, what's my rule? Is it is it subtract by 2? I don't know. Let's keep looking. So now I'm going to look at this point, and I see that the coordinates are 12 and 6. 12 and 6. Uh-oh. Well, my idea of subtracting by 2 doesn't work here, because 12 subtract 2 would be 10. So my idea, my hypothesis didn't quite work. Let's get that third point here. So that's 16 and 8. 16 on the x-coordinate, 8 on the y-coordinate. And now I have to look back for a rule that describes the relationship. Ooh, and I can see it. I can see it every single time. You take the x-coordinate, you cut it in half, and that gives you your y-coordinate. So you take the x, you divide it by 2, and that gives you your y-coordinate. So that's one way to write it. We could have written it a different way. We could have said, take your x, divide by 2, and that gives you your y. There's other ways we could have written it as well. In fact, we could have said, um, take your x value, multiply it by a half, and that gives you your y value. So we had three options, at least, for the rule 
And uh, I'm going to skip this part because I think you get the idea. So you're going to identify these points, and you're going to identify the line that each of these points lives on. So you're going to, you might have to do some estimation, and that's okay. That's perfectly fine for you to do some estimation. And that wraps up fifth grade module six, lesson seven. We're plotting points, we're using lines, and we're looking for patterns within those coordinate pairs.